Welcome to the Jamestown First Baptist Church Worship Hour. Established in 1930, the First Baptist Church has been instrumental in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across the Cumberland Mountains. An aggressive local missions program has assisted in establishing sister churches in Fentress County, the Pickett State Park area, and Morgan County. With programs to minister to the individual and the family, we invite you to join with us in our live worship service. Church. Good, morning. Good to see these all these smiling faces this morning and I hope everyone's had a wonderful week and got all the yard sales in that you wanted to take in. And uh, just thank and praise God that He's allowed us to be back this morning in His in His house. Uh, uh, if you got a bulletin this morning, uh, please take just a moment or two to look over that. I'm not gonna uh, read the bulletin, but uh, I want us to go to God in prayer, and uh, let's just ask the Lord's uh, blessings upon the service this morning, and ask God to bless as we worship together this morning, and uh, just uplift His holy name. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank You this morning. We praise You, God, for this uh, wonderful day that You've given us. We thank You, Father, that You've uh, permitted and allowed us, God, just to be in your house this morning, just to worship our Savior. And Father, we just adore him, and we just thank you, and we just praise you, God, for what he means to us. And we ask you, Father, that you would just uh, bless in the service today. We pray, Father, that everything that we, that we do or say would bring glory and honor and praise to you. And Father, we ask you, God, should there be someone today that's 
here this morning with us that doesn't know Christ as their Savior. We pray, Father, today would be a special day for them that they come to receive Him as Lord and Savior. For this we ask in Your wonderful holy name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Brother Don. Good morning, church family. I'm going to be reading this morning from uh, John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I'll tell you the truth. It is extended for you that I go away for. I will go not away. The Comforter will not come unto you. But I depart. I will send him unto you. Would the men please come forward? <clears throat> Brother Bill Tant, would you pray for us? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. And dear and Father, we thank you for this church. Now dear and Father, we, we ask blessings on each member here. And dear and Father, we ask that you be with those who are in the hospital and nursing home. And those that need you in a special way. Now we ask that you bless the gift and the giver for the ongoing your work. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand, we're going to praise him. this morning so turn around and give away a hug
Help me out, choir. There is coming a day when no more they shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears. No more tears to dim the eyes. Woe is me. Peace forevermore. Please have a seat.
Amen. Thank the Lord this morning. Uh, yes, I love technology when it's working, don't you? Uh, it's easy to depend on something like that, isn't it? Uh, uh, but you know what? Uh, to God be the glory, right? And uh, just thank and praise Him this morning. And uh, we just thank Him this morning for what He's, what he's done and... Uh, as I look out over the congregation, I see that we have just a few, uh, maybe a visiting with us this morning. I'll not call your name because I probably don't know it anyway. And, uh, but uh, I, 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 I want to say this morning, I'm certainly glad to have you with us this morning uh, if you're visiting with us. And, uh, and we're, just, uh, we're just city folks here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as you can tell... And, uh, and we're just, we're certainly glad to have you with us. And uh, if you're listening by way of television, radio this morning, we're certainly glad that you've tuned in this morning. And we just want to worship God together this morning and just to obey Him for just a few minutes this morning as we uh, look into the Word of God and pray that, that you would receive a blessing this morning. And just pray that the Lord uh, Jesus Christ would be... Uh, that he would be exalted here this morning, that he would be lifted up in this place. And uh, the longer that I, the longer that I preach, the, the the more I realize that God could do this without me. And uh, and by the way, he can do it without you. And uh, he don't need our help, but we need his, right? Amen. And we need uh, we need God's help. We need God's provision and God's uh, direction for us in life. And the passage that I'm looking at this morning. Here in John chapter 16 uh, is a very familiar passage, and it's it's a familiar it's a passage that that caught Jesus' disciples off guard, and uh, he was fixing to share with them something that they didn't know that was even coming. They didn't know that that Jesus was fixing to, to depart, and they certainly didn't know that Jesus was fixing to leave this world in the way that he left. They didn't know that he was going to die by crucifixion. They didn't realize that the Lord Jesus Christ that had been with them for about three years and they had rubbed shoulders together, they had eaten together, they had, I mean, they were, they were best friends. They didn't know that Jesus Christ, he said that, I, that he was going to go away. Not only did he say I'm going to go away, he said, but I, but I must go away. He said, I, I have to leave. And that was in part, that was part of God's plan that Jesus Christ was going to have to leave the scene of this earth. And he was going to have to go by the way of the cross. And they didn't realize that. They didn't understand that fully. And we find that over in the book of Acts chapter 2 that the passage that we're reading about this morning was going to be literally fulfilled there on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit of God was going to be birthed into the lives of these people there. And the Bible says that every person that was there that day in the upper room, they, be, they understood what, what they said in their own language. And it was, a, it was an amazing time. It was an amazing event when the, when the Holy Spirit of God came on the scene. It's been said that you can't do anything, you can't do anything in life without the administration of the Holy Spirit of God. And I want to say that's true. You, I can't preach this morning without the demonstration or the, or, the, or the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in my life. I would be a complete failure. You can't serve the Lord this morning in the energy of your flesh and please God without the Holy Spirit living and abiding in your life. You can't do that. Whether, whether, it's, whether it's singing a song, whether it's getting up and, and testifying, whatever it is that we do in life, it has to be demonstrated in the Holy Spirit of God or God is not pleased. He's not pleased. And I believe that we here at First Baptist and I'm sure other places wants to please God. 
And the only way that we can do that this morning is that we have to have the Holy Spirit of God in our lives to be successful. To have a successful Christian life. And the only way that you can have a successful Christian life, you have to have the Spirit of God. Amen. You have to have the Spirit of God. Let's notice what the Bible says here in chapter 16. And I want to back up this morning, and we'll look together this morning, beginning in verse number 1. These things have I spoken to you that you should, be, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. And yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. These things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. These things I... You know what? It's, it's so easy for us to forget, isn't it? Jesus said to them here, He said that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. Did they remember? They didn't. You know what? We, we forget very easily, don't we? I mean, from one day to the next, we'll forget, especially the older we get, right? These were young guys. These were guys in their 30s and late 20s. They should have remembered. Yeah. But notice here what he says. Should have got an amen there from some. <laughs> Remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me, whether goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. In other words, it's necessary. Necessary. It's necessary for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Our Father, we want to thank you this morning. We, we praise you th this morning, God, for what you've already done in this place. And we ask you, Father, that you would just help us, Lord, for just a few minutes this morning. As we expound upon your word, I pray, Father, that you would help us, help the listener this morning, not to listen to what I have to say, but to listen to what the Holy Spirit of God has to say to them. Father, help us this morning just to uplift your holy name as we proclaim your word. And Father, we'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. For this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. The Holy Spirit is absolutely essential. The Holy Spirit of God is absolutely essential. And without Him, our office is just a mere name. We have to have the Holy Spirit of God. What is the purpose here this morning? What's the reason? Why did God, why did the, the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever he told his disciples that he was going to go away, why did the Lord Jesus Christ say that I'm going to send you another comforter? Now, he was their comfort while he was here, right? But he said, I'm going to go away. He said that I might send another comforter unto you. And I want to tell you this morning, church, that the, that the Holy Spirit of God is, is not an it. The Holy Spirit of God is a person, and He's part of the triune Godhead. He's part of the, of the, of the Trinity this morning. And the Holy Spirit of God, the Bible says, lives and dwells inside of every born-again child of God. 
The reason that you got up this morning and come to church, it's not because that you felt like probably coming. But I want to tell you this morning, there was an inclination in you this morning called the Holy Spirit of God that told you that you needed to go to church this morning. It's the Holy Spirit of God that makes you live right. You can't live right without the liver living on the inside of you and that's the Holy Spirit of God. You cannot live right. It's an impossibility to live right and please God without the Holy Spirit of God living and dwelling inside of you. You can't do it. You say, well, preacher, I'm getting by pretty good and I'm, I don't have the Holy Spirit of God. You're not pleasing God. You might be pleasing man. You might be pleasing the preacher here this morning. But I want to tell you this morning, you're not pleasing God. And God sees right through that. Yeah. Yeah. He sees through that. The Holy Spirit of God. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit of God? Well, I want to say, say to you this morning, the, the purpose and the reason for the Holy Spirit of God is to cause separation from this world is to cause separation from this world. Paul said in Romans 12, 1, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren. Now, he's not talking to the world. He's talking to you and me. Now, you don't call just anybody brethren, do you? He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Reasonable, he said. He said, I'm not asking too much of you. He said, I'm just asking something reasonable of you. Do you know that God, he doesn't ask us to do something dramatic. He doesn't ask us to stand on our hands. He wants us just to live for him. He said, that's your reasonable service. He said, and be not conformed to this world in verse 2, but be ye transformed, he said, by the renewing of the Holy Spirit of God. Did you know how you, that you renew your minds this morning, church? It's not picking up another book and reading it. The, re, the way that we renew our minds this morning, it's through the Holy Spirit of God. We renew our minds this morning through the Holy Spirit of God and God wants us to live a separate life. He wants us to be separated from this world. Can I get an amen there? Amen. God wants us to live different. Yes. Not only do we ought to live a, a separated life, but we, we need to be a servant of the Lord. Yeah. A servant of the Lord. Paul, he says in, in almost all of his writings, Romans 1.1, 1, 1, Paul said, he says, Paul, a servant. Can you say that honestly this morning? Paul, he said, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this morning, church, what is a servant? What, 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 is, what is a servant? A servant is someone that that waits on someone else. A servant is, is someone that, like Paul, he said, he said I'm, I'm wanting to serve this person. I'm wanting to uplift this person. He said, I want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we a servant of the Lord? I want to tell you this morning that the, the Holy Spirit of God will make you a servant of the Lord. And if you're not serving the Lord, you don't have the Holy Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit of Christ, the life that you now live, Paul said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Are you serving the Lord? We find here the purpose of the Christian is to be separated from the world and to be a servant of the Lord. But not only that, but I, I find that the, the Holy Spirit of God, it, it shields us from the devil. Did you know that you've got an enemy? A lot of us not realize that yet. That, that you've got an enemy. I want to tell you this morning, if you live for God, you, you've got an enemy. He don't like you. He's a rascal. He doesn't like you. 
you're, and we're not battling against flesh and blood, the Bible says, but we're battling against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness, the Bible says, in, in high places. I want to tell you this morning that, that Satan is not on your side. He's your enemy this morning. And I want to tell you that the, the Holy Spirit of God, He shields us from the devil. He protects us. He protects us from the devil. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 11, he says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the, the vices of the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. That don't mean just get half-dressed. That don't mean just put on part of the armor of God. That means to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. You're no match for the devil if you don't put on the whole armor of God. Can I, say, can I tell you this morning that, that the Holy Spirit of God, He shields us from the devil if we put on the whole armor of God? You, he said that you might be able to stand against the, the wiles of the devil. We find here the, the purpose for the Holy Spirit, His purpose for the Christian, but not only that, but I find His program for the church. And it's not that bulletin that we have every Sunday. That's good. I like a bulletin, don't you? Yes. You know, it's, it's funny. I've been places and I'm... And you may have been that way when you come here. I don't know. But I've been places and, the, and they didn't have a bulletin. And you, got to, you get to looking for one. And then, and then, and then all of a sudden you go to, go to a church and, and they... And they didn't have a bulletin, but they start having one. And you think, boy, I don't like that. I just, I don't like a bulletin. It's, everything's, just, everything's just outlined, and that's what we have to go by. And when the time, when the time arrives that it's time to dismiss, we, we've got to go home. And, and, and then all of a sudden, they quit having a bulletin. You think, where's that bulletin at? <laughs> have you ever been that way? I, we, we, we're programmed, did you know that? A lot of times that we're, that we're programmed, but the Holy Spirit of God, I want to tell you this morning, that the Holy Spirit of God, we find that He has a program for the church. And it's not the building, it's you and me this morning. It's born again, blood washed children of God. And His program for the church is to, is to revive the saints. To revive that boy, I'm telling you what this morning, some of us need to be revived. To revive the saints. We, need, we just need to be made alive, folks. I mean, we need to be made alive sometimes. We need, just need to go back and look at what God's brought us from. And the psalmist, he said, will thou not revive us again? God, will you not revive us again? That's what we need to do. God, will you not revive us again? We need to be revived. We need to be made alive. Yes. We need that. He revives the saints. Restore life. Regain life. Give new strength. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that can do that. Yes. Not only does He revive the saints for the program of the church, but He reclaims the slackers. You ever got slack? You ever got to the place that you didn't want to do anything else? So well, I preach, I've been doing that for a long time. Let somebody else do that. You know, I, 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 never, I never have been able to find. And I'm not jumping on to you this morning. I love everybody in here this morning. I, I don't have just a... Just a a rifle up here. I've got a shotgun. I just spread it throughout the whole congregation, okay? I've never been able to find in the Word of God a retirement plan. That's right. Never have. Now, I know that you have to slow down when you get a little older. I understand that. Things don't work like they used to. But there's not one place in the Bible you'll find a retirement program. I do find that a lot of them, when they got older, they started doing more. <laughs> Moses was 80 years old. 80 years old. He was 80 years old before God even started using him. 
80. Can I, can I tell you this morning, we, we don't have time to throw in the towel and quit and say, well, let's, let's let so-and-so take care of that now. I've done it for so long. No, the, I want to tell you this morning that the Holy Spirit of God will give you the energy. The Holy Spirit of, of God this morning will, will help you. The Holy Spirit of God this morning will, will strengthen you if we'll just let the Holy Spirit of God do that. Amen? Amen. He, he, he'll do that. Not only does the Holy Spirit of God for the church program revive the saints and reclaim the slackers, but it, it reaches out to sinners. <coughs> you remember when he reached out to you? You know, that's, that's just something I'll never forget. Well, you for, how, how many forgotten about that? Do, do you remember when the Holy Spirit of God reached out to you? Can I get a witness there? It's amazing, isn't it? You say, well, preacher, explain that. I can't explain it. I just know what happened. I know what happened. I know when the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of my life as a 19-year-old boy, and He changed my life forever. Changed it. Now, I, now I believe in a change. Yes. I believe what Paul, when he, when he said in, in Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Do you believe that? Yes. He said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. In other words, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Did that happen to you in your life? Did you know that it's the Holy Spirit of God that, that caused that to happen? It's the Holy Spirit of God that caused you as a sinner to change your life. You didn't do that on your own. You don't have the power to do that. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit of God to change a person's life. If any man be in Christ, he said, he's a new creature, a new creation, he said. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. We find here that the program for the church, the Holy Spirit, it reaches out to sinners. Jesus said in Luke 14, in verse 23, He says to go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come into my house that it might be full. Rather interesting passage there this morning. Jesus said, compel them. You know what that word compel means? To drag, to urge, to force. When's the last time we've done that? <laughs> When's the last time we took somebody by the hand and urged them or pushed them or, or compelled them, forced them? You've got to go to the house of God. Jesus said, whatever it takes, fill my house full. Compel them to come. Go into the highways and the hedges and compel them Come to my house that it might be full. We see his program for the church, but not only that, the Holy Spirit of God, it always points to the cross. The Holy Spirit of God always points to the cross. Every time. It always does. It shows believers their security. Did you know that you're secure in God? You're secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, he said, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation. That word just simply means judgment. God will never judge you as a sinner again. Amen? Amen. But his past from death unto life. You're secure. You're secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit makes you aware of that. Not only does He show the believer their security, but He shows unbelievers the Savior. 
John 1 29 it says behold while John the Baptist was preaching was preaching and baptizing there in the river of Jordan he looked and he saw someone that he didn't know and he said there's that phone again behold the Lamb of God he said that taketh away the sin of the world Behold, he said, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It's Jesus Christ that takes the sin away. It's the Holy Spirit of God that takes the sin away. The Holy Spirit, not only we find the purpose for the Christian and the program for the church, and we see that He always points to the cross. Not only that, but He pleads for the people to be converted. He pleads for people to be converted. You know what? The Holy Spirit of God wants everyone to come. Everybody. He wants everybody to be saved. The Bible says in, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, He said, Come unto me, all you that labor, as I said last Sunday. He said, I'll give you rest. Luke 19, 10, He says, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Came to seek and to save that which was lost. A person's got to find out that they're lost in order that they'll ever be saved. He came to seek and to save, he said, that which was lost. Not only that, but not only he wants everyone to, one to come, but he waits for your decision. Do you know God's patient with us? God's patient. He's patient with us. Peter said he's long-suffering to us, word. Long-suffering. He says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Can I ask you this morning, if you're here, and you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, and you want to do that, but you've never done that. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Are, are you waiting on God to come down and hit you in the head with them all? Are you waiting on God to maybe send one of His holy angels to get your attention? Are you waiting on something tragic to happen in your life? Can I tell you, probably none of those things are going to happen. You've got to take God at His word. Amen. Right. Take God at His word. There's not a person in this building this morning that had an angel from God to come to you and say, you need to get saved. God never come down and hit you in the head and say, this is your day. God never done any of those things. God said, you've got to take me at my word. Take God at His word. You say, how, how do you do that? Believe upon His word. Believe upon His name. Trust that word believe in the, in, in the, in the Bible, in the, in the New Testament there, is found 275 times. And it means to trust. You've got to trust God. You've got to take God at His word. Are you going to do that this morning? Are you going to take God at His word and trust Him? The decision's left up to you. The choice is left up to you. Not only does He give us a decision to make, but He, he warns about the gravity of life. You know life's short. <clears throat> life is very short. The Bible says to... Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what another day may bring forth. James, he said, what is your life? He said, it's even a vapor that appeareth for just a, a moment in time. Appeareth for just a little while. He says, and then it vanisheth away. What are you waiting on this morning? Can I tell you this morning... If the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to you this morning, don't turn Him away. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ this morning as your Savior, and He'll make a new person out of you. Do you believe that this morning, church? Do you believe that God makes new people 
the Holy Spirit of God makes new people, new creations? He does. Let's stand together this morning. You may be here this morning and the Holy Spirit of God is, has spoken to you this morning. You say, how does the Holy Spirit of God speak to a person? He shows you your condition. He shows you that the need that you have. If you're here this morning and you're lost, the Holy Spirit of God makes you aware of that. He's the one that can show you that you're lost and that you need to be saved. He's, he's the one that is able to show you the, the need of salvation. If you're here this morning and you're lost, you don't know Christ. I beg you not to leave this building this morning in the condition that you come. But if you'll trust the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, He can make a difference in your life. He can change your life forever. And He's the only one that can do that. While we start singing a stanza of a song this morning, while Brother Gary leads us, if you're here this morning, as just as soon as Brother Gary starts singing, why don't you get out of your pew this morning and come and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. And He will. One day it'll be too late. One day the day of grace will be too late. Be too late to pray. Be too late to do anything. But now God's extending His hand to you. He's extending this day of grace and He wants you to be saved. While we sing together, just as we start singing, why don't you get out of your pew this morning, make your wild way to this altar this morning, right now. Thank you this morning. I thank you for your attention in the service. I know I may have went a few minutes over, uh, but thank and praise the Lord this morning for your attention. Uh, pray, pray, pray for the service this evening at 6 o'clock. We meet here at 6, uh, and we just have a wonderful time on, on Sunday evening. Uh, kind of a little bit more laid back on Sunday evening. Uh, and we just, Brother Gary, he asks for songs from the floor, and just uh, we just have a wonderful time. And, uh, and if, uh, if you've not been attending our evening service, we kind of a great honor to have you with us and uh, appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, and also uh, be much in prayer for our, uh, our crusade. Uh, that'll be September the 9th. It'll start that Sunday morning uh, just behind uh, KFC, right in front of Walmart in the field there. We'll be having a big tent set up there. We'll be offering Sunday school at 9.15 that morning here. And then we'll be dismissing here and going out there. And uh, be much in prayer for, uh, for that revival. And uh, we're meeting there uh, each Sunday evening uh, after the worship service here. We meet out there. We, we started last Sunday evening. We meet out there to pray. And we had about 40 or 50 uh, joined us last Sunday evening. Just had a wonderful time of prayer there uh, in the field. And I, I just I want to see people saved. I want to see people come to know the, the Christ of Calvary because I believe our time here is short. And, uh, and I, I hope that uh, there will be a great harvest there uh, starting September the 9th and looking forward to just the wonderful services. There's about four other churches uh, that I've asked to be part of that. And 
We're supposed to meet with them this coming Tuesday, and we're just excited about what God's going to do there. And I believe a lot of people will be saved. Looking forward to it. All right. Yes. I wanted to mention about the Financial Peace University because that's coming up in just like five weeks, a little over a month. And it's a the Dave Ramsey course, if anybody's familiar with Dave Ramsey, and Earl and I have done it several, several years ago, and it just really changed our lives. It really helped us in so many ways. The cost is $109 for a couple or, you know, for an individual for the set of the workbooks and things. And we really need people to get signed up and set up in the next couple of weeks so we can order those materials. If we have 10 or more, we can get like $5 off per set of materials. So if you're interested in signing up, I urge you to do that in the next couple of weeks. Or if you know somebody, maybe somebody you work with, somebody in your family, they don't have to go to this church. Uh, but just give, the, give their money and their information to Veronica in the office Monday through Friday. Or there's also a link online uh, where you can go to the Dave Ramsey web website and sign up under our church name. So I encourage people to do that. And there's also flyers for the crusade at the back door. Take some of those, take a flyer, put it up at your work your place of business, some place that you go to frequently so that we can get the word out. Amen. Brother Bobby, to answer, would you dismiss this brother in word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we're just thankful to be in your house, Father, and we're thankful for uh, for your word through Brother Earl, Lord. Father, that uh, let us remember that uh, your Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, and Father, that uh, if anyone doesn't know you, then they will come and accept your word. Uh, give us peace the rest of the day. Watch over us, Lord. And we say these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.